Hello, Stats class. Here's Lesson 5.3a, which is about conditional probability and independence. This material will not be on the quiz on Friday. The quiz covers only 5.1 and 5.2, so this will be on next week's quiz. And we're going to actually continue an example we did in 5.2b. Let's go back to the Pierce-Dears scenario. There's more we can do with this. Um, and we did it with a Venn diagram before, in fact. Just remind you, it looked like this Venn diagram. This is the scenario that we're reminding ourselves of, and this time I'm going to do it with a two-way table just to show you the difference. I want you to notice on a two-way table that you're not going to put uh, male and peer steers in the same direction. So we're going to have male, and we would not want to put peer steers here because it's not the opposite of male. Peer steers goes up here because there could be both. What we have is male and female and total. Those are not two separate variables. Those are two categories of one variable. And then pierced and not pierced, I'm going to do it with the symbol and total. I could have put not male, but I just feel like the females would appreciate me calling them females instead of not males. Anyway, um, what we had before were the numbers given 19 and 71 and 84. And then we calculated some others, like we added them together to get 90 for some of what we did. We added these and got 103. There were four women without pierced ears, 75 and 100, that's 178, and 88. Those numbers should look familiar because we saw them before. And the highlighting again, because I like it, we've got this whole row as yellow. That pierced steers is pink, and the overlapping area was the 19. So this first part is review of 5.2b, and it actually is helpful for getting ready for a quiz anyway. And remember, we looked at the Venn diagram or the table either way, and we talked about finding the probability of male and pierced, which is both, was 19 out of 178. And the probability of male or pierced was the 90 plus the 103 minus the 19 people who got counted twice. And that's still all out of 178. And it came out to 174 out of 178. So that's just reminders of what we did in the last lesson. Um, and I'll remind you that this, we could find a couple other ways. We could also find it by adding these three numbers, 84 and 19 and 71, or we could find it by doing 178 minus 4. We could do it by doing, say, 1 minus 4 over 178, and that would also give us 174. It's basically counting everybody except the neithers. And that's basically what we did in the last lesson. So this is the addition rule, add them and subtract the overlap that we saw in Lesson 5 to it. So now that I've reminded you of that, let's move on to conditional probability. Should remind you of some of the stuff we did in chapter one with two-way tables, because we did con marginal distributions and conditional distributions back in chapter one, and it's almost the same idea. The conditional probability is the probability of an event given that another event has already occurred. So, for instance, I might be interested in finding out, and you could think of this as a conditional distribution also, I might be interested in finding the proportion of males who have pierced ears. So that would be a probability also, the percent or proportion of males with pierced ears. The of males is the given piece. The pierced ears is called the event of interest. 
So in other words, we want to find the probability of pure steers given that they're male, um, not in the whole population, but just in the population of males. And there's a symbol for that that looks like this, the probability of pierced given male. It's a straight up and down line. It kind of looks like a divided by, but it's not slanted. It's straight up and down, and that symbol means given. And like we did in chapter one, we will be dividing by one of these marginal totals instead of the total total, which is 178. So if I want the probability of pierced given male, pierced given male, again, um, I would take the pierced ears males divided by the total males. I guess I'll call them pierced males. <laughs> divided by the total males which is the 19 over the 90. And notice that's not the same as 19 over 178. Um, it's different. If I found the percent of this, it's 21.1%. Um, but the most important thing you need to know is that the numerator is the both. Numerator is what's given, or what, or the both be pierced and male, and the bottom denominator is the given. So let me write it this way. It's also the both over the given. Or in symbols, it's the probability of pierced and male divided by the probability of male. The thing that's given goes on the bottom. And that's kind of a common sense thing. If you think about the percent of males with pierced ears means we are focusing only on the males and we want pierced out of total. And that's basically what we're doing. Now, of course, we could do that with females also. Um, so we could do the probability of pierced given female or pierced given not male. Um, and that would be the same thing. It would be the pierced females, females with pierced ears, divided by the total females. And now we're focusing on the second row instead of the first row of this table. So we're going to take in this group of 88 females, how many had pierced ears? That's 84 out of 88, which is 95.5%. A lot more women pierce their ears than men. They are more likely to have pierced ears. So you could write this in words by saying 95.5% of females have pierced ears. It helps to put it in words sometimes. And notice that that's way more than the males, like I said. So that means there is a relationship between these variables. Back in chapter one, we talked about that. Um, is there an association between these variables? In other words, does it make a difference whether you're ma male or female in your probability? And that is called independence. These are not independent because they didn't match. So the question is, are they independent? We'll write the definition down below. And the answer is no. They are not independent because the probabilities don't match. In fact, you can also see that by just doing the probability of pierced, which we did in lesson 5.2b. Probability of pierced was the total pierced years 103 divided by the grand total of everybody who was surveyed, that's 103 out of 178. And that's a probability that's somewhere in between these two. In fact, if you divide it, you'll find that it's 57.9%. And what that tells us is what I actually expected would happen, that females are more likely to have pierced ears than the general population, and males are less likely to have pierced ears. That means they're in, they are not independent. They are, you could say that your probability of pierced ears depends on whether you're male or female. So um, before I go to the official formula and the definition of independent, I want to point out that if you do it the other way, and we saw this in chapter one, if I do it the other way, probability of male given pierced is not usually the same as the probability of pierced given male. So it ma makes a difference which direction you're going. Male given pierced would be the both male and pierced divided by just the pierced. I feel like I've said that word pierced too many times today, but that's okay. 
Um, so both divided by pierced would be the 19. And instead of dividing it by the 90, we're going down and dividing it by the 103. And it's 18.4%, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is to notice it's not the same as that one. They're different. So watch out for that. Um, they're not the same thing. The thing that is given always goes on the bottom, and that's how you decide what goes on the bottom. So there's two more things in this set of notes, and one is the official formula for this, which I actually gave you up here, but I'll put it down here so we can put a box around it. The official formula is the probability of A given B is the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. That's the definition of conditional probability, and it's always the, the way to remember it is both over given. But um, more important than the formula is can you find those numbers on the table? Can you figure out which one to divide by based on what you're trying to find out? So that's the official formula, definition of conditional probability. And then one more definition, and that's the definition of independent. We'll do a whole lot more of this next week. The independent part is really important. Um, independent means that knowing the probability of one event doesn't affect the other. Or probability or outcome, if knowing that the coin came out heads does not affect the next coin. Um, Probability or outcome of one event doesn't affect the other. Um, so I'm going to say or outcome. So official definition of independent is if the probability of A given B is the same as the probability of A not given B, meaning that the given information doesn't make a difference. And if you think about the meaning of the word dependent, that will help you. Because if these are different, that means that the probability of A depends on B. Or like up here, the probability of having pierced ears depends on whether you're male or female. It makes a difference in these probabilities. That's what makes them dependent and not independent. Or if officially the correct word is associated. Because it might not be because they're male or female. It might be because of some other factor. So um, the opposite of independent is associated, and it just means that knowing one of them makes a difference in the other. And we, like I said, we'll do a whole lot more with that idea in the rest of Lesson 5.3, which is next week. So last thing I need to say is the homework for, this, this would be Wednesday night, um, is do 5.2b for sure, which you may have already done. 5.3a can come after the quiz, so the homework that's officially assigned after these notes is the review homework to get you ready for the quiz. There's a quiz Friday, and then Friday night's homework is the 5.3a homework. So I hope that makes sense to you. I'll try to make that clear on Canvas also.